So we are going to learn how to find the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix in this video, which we'll use later for things in vector calculus, such as the cross product. Now before we get to the idea of the determinant, first we have to understand what a matrix is, so we know why taking the determinant even makes sense. Then we'll move on to what the determinant means and how to calculate it in terms of the components of this matrix. We're going to go through the intuition of how that formula is developed. So we're going to start out by talking about what a matrix is. Now if you haven't watched my video on what a matrix represents from the linear algebra series, you can check that in the link in the description. I recommend you watch that and then come back to this video. If you haven't watched that, we're going to go through a quick summary here. When we look at a matrix, in this case a 2 by 2 matrix, we see two columns that represent x and y, and we also see two rows that represent x and y. But the column and the specific row of a particular number represent very important things. The column that a number is in represents the input, and the row that a number is in represents the output. So what does that mean? Well, one of the ways that we can think about matrices is in terms of multiplying a matrix onto a vector. So let's say we want to multiply the matrix 3, 2, 1, 1 that we have here by the vector 0, 1. In this case, 0, 1 is going to be the same thing as this notation from a standard vector calculus textbook. In this case, we have an x component of 0 and a y component of 1. We can think about that as the input to our matrix. So the only input we have in this case is a y, and that means when we look at the output, our output is going to come from this y input column. We see that a y input corresponds to an x output of 2 in this case, and it corresponds to a y output of 1. If we apply the same process to the x vector, so we take 3, 2, 1, 1, and multiply it by the vector 1, 0, in this case we're only going to be having an x input, so we just look at this first column, and the output is going to be 3, 1. Notice our x input of 1 got mapped to an x output of 3 right here, and the x input of 1 got mapped to a y output of 1. So now that we have an understanding of what a 2 by 2 matrix does in terms of how it affects a standard x vector and a standard y vector, we can take a look at what that means geometrically, starting with this graph down here. We can think of original 2D space that we're looking at here as being composed of little x vectors, this is our 1, 0, and little y vectors, 0, 1. And we can think about every square in this grid having an area of 1, because it's 1 this way and 1 that way, so our total area is just 1 times 1. Now what would happen if we apply the matrix 3, 2, 1, 1 to these two vectors? Well, we know 1, 0 is going to get moved to the vector 3, 1. So it's going to end up right here. And our y vector, 0, 1, is going to get moved to 2, 1, like this. Now if we want to think about space in terms of what we're seeing here, it's no longer going to be a square like it was before, but instead it's going to be a parallelogram. So we see our parallelogram looks something like this, and one question we might have is how much has space been stretched from our original one by one square into this skinny parallelogram? Well, this question by itself is kind of complicated, so we're going to look at a couple of simpler examples and eventually get to this final result. What if instead we had the matrix 3, 0, 0, 1? When I use these vertical bars here, that's denoting the determinant of our matrix, which asks how much has the area been scaled. So we start with our vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1 here. Notice our y vector stays the same at 0, 1, but the x vector is now moved all the way out here to 3, 0. So we don't have a parallelogram like we do down here. We just have a rectangle, which is a special case of the parallelogram. In this case, the area is going to equal 3 times 1, because our base is 3, that's this 3 right here, and our height is 1, that's this 1 here, and that's going to equal 3. So now we're going to add an extra component to this matrix. Say we have 3, 0, 1, 1. We want to take the determinant of this. 
Now we have our 1, 0, 0, 1 here. Our y vector is still staying the same, but now our x vector has moved to 3, 1, like this. So now we do have a parallelogram, and it's going to look like that. So we see our two 3, 1 vectors this way, our 0, 1 vectors this way. What's the area of this shape? Well, we can think about splitting the shape into two triangles like this. They're both going to be right triangles with right angles like that. And we can find the area of this triangle and then this triangle and add them up. Well, the area of either one of these triangles is going to be 1 half of the base, which in this case is 1, times the height, this direction, which is 3. Or you could do the base and the height the other way. Either case, we're going to have a final area of 1 half times 3 times 1. Notice this triangle up here is going to be the exact same calculation, a base of 3 and a height of 1. So we're actually going to have two of these 1 half times 3 times 1, which means we can just ignore that 1 half. And our final result is again going to be 3. Now we have to have that final component that we've been ignoring this whole time. What is the determinant of 3, 2, 1, 1? That's the graph that we have right here. Well, we have our parallelogram. Let's try to think about the same thing that we did here. We want to split this parallelogram into the area of two triangles. And we can do that at this point right here. Just like before, the two triangles are going to be the same. So we're going to have two times the area of whatever this triangle here is. Well, just like before, it's going to be 1 half. In this case, we could find the base as this little section right here, from 2 to 3 in the x direction. That means our base is going to have a length of 1, and our height is going to be 1 as well. From this base down to the tip of the triangle, this vertical distance is 1. Just like before, that 2 and that 1 half are going to cancel out, and our final answer is 1. Now we can take a look at the pattern that's going on here. Notice our original area was 3. When we added this 1 into our matrix instead of the 0, it was still 3. But now when we added this 2, suddenly it's gone from 3 to 1. And you might notice that 3 minus this 2 gives us 1. So let's think about why that is. This rectangle, we can find the area pretty simple. It's just the base times the height. When we look at this parallelogram here, we can still see that rectangle in this parallelogram. If you think about taking that rectangle and bending it this direction, that doesn't actually change the area. But something different is happening on this bottom diagram here. If we start with a rectangle like this, and we only move one side, we only rotate it this direction, the area isn't affected. But in this case, notice we're moving this x vector up and we're moving the y vector down. So it's almost like we're taking two ends of a book and closing them like that. The area in between this square here is going to get smaller as we move the two vectors towards each other, just like this. So when we think about that in terms of our original matrix, this 3 and this 1 that we have right here, that's going to be how much the x input gets scaled to the x output, meaning scaled this direction, and how much the y input gets scaled to the y output this direction. But this 2 and this 1 are something different. The 2 is how much y gets mapped to x. That's this vector starting vertical and moving towards the x direction. And this 1 here is how much x gets mapped to y. So just like y is moved toward the x, x is moved toward the y. That's that book closing effect. And that's the reason this determinant got smaller. How much smaller did it get? Well, it got smaller by 2. And 2 is equal to 2 times 1. These two components multiplied together is how much smaller our determinant gets. So let's try to think about a general formula that we have here. 3 times 1 for our determinant on the top. That's going to be the same as 3 times 1 minus 0 times 0. Notice these zeros are what we have across this diagonal. Down here, 3 times 1 is also 3 times 1 minus 0 times 1. Again, that's across this diagonal. 
But on the bottom here, instead of thinking about 1 times 1 as our area, let's think about starting with 3 times 1 like we did here. 3 times 1, well, what would happen if we followed this pattern? 0 times 0 for our diagonal, 0 times 1 for our diagonal, next would be minus 2 times 1 for our diagonal. 3 minus 2, that gives us the 1 that we were looking for as the area. So let's think about a general formula for the determinant of a matrix A, B, C, D. If we take the pattern that we're looking at here, first we want to multiply A, D. That's this 3 times 1, and then we're going to subtract B times C, which is the other diagonal. So this formula, A, D minus B, C, says first we multiply across this diagonal here, because that represents the areas scaling perpendicular to each other, like a rectangle. But then we have to subtract off this BC section, which talks about how much book closing is going on with our vectors. If both of these components are positive, that means the vector's angle is decreasing relative to each other, and therefore the parallelogram is getting smaller. So that is the area for the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix.